This video lesson discusses the concept of density and its applications. Support for the development of this lesson has been provided by the National Science Foundation through the Ohio University Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom program. Let's start with a quick experiment. We have a marble, an air-filled ball, a water balloon, an air-filled balloon, and an apple. If we place these objects in water, which do you think will float and which will sink? Think about this question for a minute and discuss what you think will happen. Did you guess correctly? If not, which ones were different from your original guess? Why do some of the objects float while others sink? The answer is density. Let's find out what density is and why it's so important in determining whether an object will sink or float. First of all, what is density? It's an intensive property, which means it's always the same for a given material, no matter how much of that material you have. For example, one brick and a ton of bricks have the same density. Density is a measure of compactness. It tells us how much matter is in a given volume. That means that if I have two objects with the same volume but different densities, the object with the higher density has more matter packed into that volume. Now that we have an idea of what density means, how do we give it a value? If density describes the amount of matter per a given volume, we can write it as the mass divided by the volume. In equation form, we write d equals m over v. This equation is easy to remember. The m over v is like a heart, so all you have to know is I love density. So why is density important? What do we use it for? We know from our demonstration that it dictates whether an object will float or sink. But think about some actual applications where knowing this is important. Did you know that density is used to design ships, submarines, and airplanes? Density is also responsible for convection currents in the ocean atmosphere and the Earth's mantle. Did you know that density can be used to identify materials since it's an intensive property? Let's go back to our float or sink question. Why do some objects float while others sink? We answered density. But what is it about density that makes an object float or sink? Take a few minutes to discuss your ideas. If we have an object that's density is greater than the density of the fluid, the object will sink. But if the object has a density that's less than the density of the fluid, then the object will float. So how can a steel ship float? while a small steel ball would sink in water. Let's think about the difference between the ship and the ball. The ship is shaped in such a way that most of its volume is filled with air. That means that there's not much mass packed into the volume, so it's less dense than the steel ball, which has a lot of mass packed into its volume. Then how do submarines work? How can they stay afloat sometimes and be submerged other times? Submarines have ballast tanks that are used to help it surface and submerge. When the submarine is at the surface, its ballast tanks are filled with air. To submerge, the air is released and the ballast tanks fill with water. When it's time to surface again, the water is released and the ballast tanks are filled with air again. So far, we've talked about the first two reasons why density is important. But now let's talk about convection currents. Convection currents occur when a warm fluid and cool fluid interact. The molecules in the warm fluid are excited and moving apart, while the molecules in the cool fluid are closer together. It's easy to remember which is which if you think about yourself when you're warm or cool. If you're hot, you don't want a lot of other people around you, 
so you spread out. But when you're cold, you huddle close together. It's the same idea with the molecules in a warm and cool fluid. Now what does all this have to do with density? If we look at the diagrams for the warm fluid and the cool fluid, we notice that for the cool fluid, there are more molecules in the same amount of space. Since the molecules are packed in closer together, more molecules fit into the space. Remember how we describe how much matter is packed into a given volume? With density. Since the warm fluid has fewer molecules per unit volume than the cool fluid, the warm fluid is less dense. So what does this tell us about how convection currents work? Since we have a warm fluid with a low density and a cool fluid with high density, that means the warm, less dense fluid will rise to the surface, while the cool, more dense fluid will sink. Density is the reason why hot air rises and cold air sinks. When the hot air rises, it cools, becomes more dense, sinks back down, where it warms as it passes over land, and then rises again. The same is true of convection currents in the ocean and Earth's mantle. When we started this lesson, we listed four reasons why density is important. Do you remember those reasons? We said it dictates whether an object will float or sink, that it's an important factor in the design of ships, submarines, and airplanes, that it's responsible for convection currents, and that it can be used to identify materials. So far, we've discussed the first three. So let's talk about the fourth point identifying materials. This can be a simple or complex problem, depending on the situation. If we have an object that's only made up of one material, and it has a volume that's easy to determine, like a cube or sphere, then the problem is very simple. But if we have a mixture of materials or a shape that we can't calculate a volume for, then the problem becomes more difficult. Let's start with an easy problem. You're given a cube of wood with a mass of 96 grams and dimensions of 5 centimeters. Use the table below to determine what kind of wood this cube is made of. What should we do first to solve this problem? Let's start by identifying what we're given and what we need to find. We were told that the mass of the cube is 96 grams and its length, width, and height are 5 centimeters. We're trying to find out what kind of wood this cube is made from, so we need to find the density. Now we can start solving the problem. Since we know we love density, we can write density as mass per volume, or D equals M over V. We were given the mass of the cube, but we need to calculate the volume. We know the volume of a cube is length times width times height, so we get 125 cubic centimeters for the volume. Now we can plug these values into our density equation and solve. Remember to always put your units. This will help you make sure you're using the correct numbers and you have the right units. We'll write D equals M over V, which we know is 96 grams over 125 cubic centimeters, which gives us a density of 0.77 grams per cubic centimeter. If we go back to the table we were given, this is the density of American white oak. Now let's talk about a harder problem, the problem that was given to Archimedes by the king of Syracuse. As the story goes, the king gave a jeweler some gold and told him to make a crown out of it. When the jeweler finished, the king was suspicious that the jeweler stole some of the gold and used a mixture of metals for the crown. But the king didn't know how to prove that the crown wasn't pure gold. So he went to Archimedes and asked him to find out if the crown was pure gold. To discover how Archimedes solved this mystery, continue to the Archimedes Principle video lecture. Let's review the concepts we've covered in this lesson. Take a few minutes to try to answer these questions before you view the solutions. Density is an intensive property. It's the same regardless of the amount of material. Density is equal to mass divided by volume which indicates that density measures the compactness of an object. If the density of an object is greater than the density of the fluid, 
the object will sink. On the other hand, if the density of an object is less than the density of the fluid, the object will float. Convection currents occur because hot air or fluid, which is less dense, rises and cold air or fluid, which is more dense, sinks. For more practice with these concepts, you can complete the following additional activities. Through the floater sink soda pop experiment, you will investigate how the addition of solvents, such as sugar or salt, can affect a liquid's density. The layering liquids activity will demonstrate how liquids separate into layers based on their density. The key to getting the layers is to first decide what order the liquid will be added into the graduated cylinder. Through the colorful convection currents activity, you will explore the role that density plays in forming convection currents. You will use colored hot and cold water to observe the convection currents. You can also practice performing density calculations using these questions, which are also provided as a worksheet.